some good tea. This is Peppy, the lead developer of OS, who loaded up on caffeine to discuss the last four laser change logs. We'll get to what that means, but first, let's cover score multipliers for custom speeds in double time and half time. Previously, if you had DT enabled, you'd have a 1.12 times multiplier at the default speed, and it would reset back to one times with any adjustment. But now, this counter increases by 0.02 times with every speed increment of 0.1. So this is something that we discussed in the last community meeting. We'll see the feedback we get from the community after this goes out. We were planning on doing a full score reset, but uh, it's just going in as is. Obviously, the state of scoring in Laser is a bit all over the place, and we're just going to roll with it for now. <laughs> This change might feel frustrating to the stable diehards out there. Like Double Time and Hidden Hard Rock have always been basically the same multiplier, but now one has an unfair advantage. That was my gut reaction too, but my gut doesn't exactly consider the future. Let's wait until we get to Hidden and Hard Rock and adjust their multipliers too, maybe? I don't know. I don't know what the future holds, but um, multipliers are not set in stone. And there's also a hope that the, the new way we've done to like rotate selections or something, that's something which mappers will gradually come to appreciate and use. So far, object rotation in the laser editor has been pretty inconvenient. You could select and rotate freely, but getting any precise rotations was extremely tedious. In this update though, there might be hope for mappers after all. There was a bit of discussion in this one over whether 15 degrees or 18 degrees was a better snap. Right now we've gone with 15 because it's, I don't know, more of a standard angle, but I'm sure we will allow the ability to change the snap angle in the future. You can select objects by clicking and dragging in the playfield. Before this update, spinners made this really annoying because you could select them way after they disappeared from view. And now that's not a concern. So hit object inspector. I added this into the game just to debug another issue that I was looking into. As I was doing that, I realized that this is actually quite useful to mappers as well. And it is building on functionality, which does already exist in our stable. I remember adding that on request from someone and it was added basically in the only piece of screen real estate that I could fit it in. In laser, it now has its own dedicated area. And I added all the pieces of information that I thought would be useful, but we are open to any kind of suggestions. If you're like me, you have the compulsion to save your map anytime you physically can. And this new fix makes saving a laser considerably faster. The reason why is not something you really need to know, but you can if you really want to. And one more editor change, colors and Tycho mapping were previously based on left click or right click, but they've been modified to hit sounding based coloring just like stable. It does free up right click, which means we can use right click for more of a common editor functionality, bringing up a context menu or deleting the hovered hit object or something like that. Every laser update has lots of small changes that don't need much explanation. But they're still interesting, so I'll cover however many fit in the next 30 seconds. This hit lighting box and upward scrolling mania was misaligned, and now it's fixed. In catch, the difficulty adjust mod now allows approach rate and circle sizes below 1.0. And at those low circle sizes, these objects were too big for some reason. Now they're correctly sized, I guess. Epilepsy warning is now disabled whenever storyboards are also disabled. I'm honestly thinking about just removing the epilepsy warning or only showing it once per session or something. I don't think we've saved anyone from an epilepsy attack yet. This number updates when deleting maps. Guest difficulties now show the correct mapper name. The pause sound changes whenever- Remember the beginning of this video when I said we'd cover the last four change logs? That's because Laser has hot fixes, aka tiny updates that fix game breaking issues immediately after a major release is published. So the last major release was March 26th, and a hot fix came out the same day. Yeah, so we found out that Vulcan wasn't working too well for most people, so we've just turned it off for now. <laughs> same day fixes like this happen with practically every release, but this time was a bit different. There was another hot fix a week later on April 3rd, plus a same day hot fix from hot fix. Why did it take a week? Uh, because this new render was a beast of a change. We had fixes for multiple platforms all being worked on at the same time, so we got them all completed and then pushed out the first hot fix. And because a week had passed, a few other changes had been implemented, like the spinner selection thing and mania hit lighting. Anyway, um, back to the render. Choosing OpenGL on iOS would just stop the game from starting up, so that's been disabled. That was my bedtime alarm. Um, <laughs> for now, we've just removed all the options which we know are not in a very good state, and we will add them back as they become uh, more usable. 
Uh, Apple has a very nice profiling tool set and we've been going through that, not just Frenzy, but also Smokey and myself. And we've come up with a list of things that we think can improve the performance. It's going to be beneficial to all players, not just the iOS players. And that's about it. 